the hard part is when people don't pay you or don't have money in trust, you need to stop working. Like absolutely just stop. Cut them off and tell them to pay you. And then that's, that's where it gets like the rubber meets the road, man. Lawsome, the podcast for law firms, powered by Consult Webs. Welcome back to Lawsome, the podcast for lawyers that sweats the small stuff, like socks, and routinely ignores the bigger things, like pants. We're here to inform, educate, and entertain the legal community on the latest in legal marketing and law firm development. I am co-host Jake Sanders, and I'm joined by the inevitable Paul Julius. Paul, how you doing today? I'm I'm doing good, and and I am pants equipped today. I did uh, not I'm ignore <laughs> ignore the pants. How about you? I, I have a pair. Of, I have a pair of socks that becomes my pants. Oh, nice. So. Pa- panty socks. We'll just let everyone think about that for a <laughs> long minute here. Well, we can't go back. Uh, we can only go forward. We should tell people what's on the show. On the show today, we're talking about getting paid. First, with an article by Jared Correa, an attorney at work. And then we talked to Marco Brown about a CLE presentation, getting paid your number one job. And of course, we put in the extra work with our guests with five questions we ask everyone. Pull up a plate. It's the Hot Takes Buffet. The link today on the Hot Take Buffet is from Attorney at Work. It's by Jared Correa. Whenever you need a good article, get Jared. It's entitled Shake Your Money Maker, Getting Paid in 2017. <laughs> I, I know it's old, but the timeless information in this resonates with what Marco talks about later, resonates with people we've had on the show, like Vanessa and uh, Sarah, who talk about worth and valuation and getting paid. Um, so I'll start with Jared's words. We'll do a hot take and then, um, and then we'll go get to the interview. So he says, lawyers and money do not go together like peas and carrots. Actually, let me rephrase that. Lawyers and talking about money do not go together like peas and carrots. Lawyers and managing money do not go together like peas and carrots. And lawyers and setting competitive market rates do not go together like peas and carrots. Lawyers and making money, however? Yeah, that goes together like peas and carrots. Lawyers, like every group of business professionals, want to make money. It's the antecedents for doing so, however, that get in the way. Peas meet Brussels sprouts. Um, he's so amazing with the way he writes, because you don't have to say this stuff. You don't have to talk about peas and carrots. Um, you don't have to belabor metaphors and beat the horses dead in the trench. Um, but he does. And I actually just enjoy it because I bet a lot of lawyers are kind of feeling this. Um, he gives some good tips here. My take is, is that collecting on invoices has always been this handshake, uh, affair. I trust you. I trust you'll handle this and I trust you trust. And that just doesn't work. Um, but I also think people don't want to be breathing down people's neck. You know, because then you'll scare them away. So I, I just feel there is this very human problem of wanting something and not wanting to bother someone. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if that's a hot take, but I think I have commiseration for the lawyers out there that are having problems collecting um, because it sucks, you know? But Jared has great tips. My hot take is you should read this. What, what's your what's your thought? <laughs> I'm wearing pants no, at least. You're, you're right. No, but you're really right. And I, it's not just lawyers or even professionals. It's That's weird it. Everybody. asking for money. Yeah. You know, it's a very like when you get down to it, it's I think you're right. Like you, there's this implied thing like, OK, you're here in my office. You're going to do this work and then I will, you know, pay you for this work when it actually comes time to it, you know, to to get down to it and, you know 
bust out the 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 the, the checkbook or the, mm-hmm. if anybody wants to use those right. or uh you know pull out the wallet or whatever it's it's awkward no matter what like mm-hmm. and I, I it cracks me up like thinking you know if you've seen the 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 commercials for quickbooks um yeah by the way, quickbooks pay us um right. you owe us for this right. but where they're like you know easily manage your stuff send an invoice online they're just like tapping things on their phone and they're getting paid right away i was like <laughs> never happened so i'm sorry <laughs> it just doesn't happen that way it's weird and it's difficult you know there's i think one thing that um people don't think about is there's the, people have this priority you know like mm. if it's like uh keep the gas on or pay the lawyer yeah, right the gas is staying on you know so so there is that <laughs> aspect and i was really blown away on that side uh, yeah. talking to marco later um, where I was like, man, I'd be terrified to not pay a lawyer. Mm-hmm. And he was like, dude, people do it all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but what really stuck out at me. So anyway, about this, uh, about this article, um, the two points that stuck out with me are, are, are right at the end, mm-hmm. understand the relationship between your overhead and your revenue. Right. And then the one he says after that is make efforts to collect on your accounts receivable. And I think if you do the first, the second will become um, imperative to you once you understand, like you need this money and, mm. and Marco really nails that later. Like if you're not getting paid, you're running a charity, mm. you're doing stuff, you know, not only is it leaving, you know, the invoices that you don't go after, um, but the stuff where you're like, well, I'll just, you know, I'll just do this thing. We didn't really talk about it, but I'll just take care of it. Mm-hmm. You got to make sure you're getting paid for that. And I, I've heard it before, you know, where lawyers are like, Oh, you know, I, I get this. Yeah. They, they invoice for every second we're on the phone, Mm -hmm. you know, point one zero, uh, you know, of an hour for opening an email, but you have to do that or else it's not going to show up. That's, I mean, you got to cover that over overhead. If you don't understand, you know, I need to bill and collect X amount of dollars per month. Before I even start making, like actually making money, mm-hmm. um, you got a real problem. Yeah. And and I think too is making the efforts to collect on this stuff. Uh, you know, dropping an invoice in the mail and and crossing your fingers. I I, I think I think it, it's not considered aggressive to you know follow up with an email um, or or something like that or have you know a more automated. I mean, people use you know Venmo stuff like that. Oh uh, yeah. You know, whatever. I mean, have those things set up uh-huh. so that you can just make it easy. And mm-hmm. I think that's really an important part of getting paid. Um, yeah. and, and if you don't do that, you know, it, it, yeah, you didn't go to law school to figure out, you know, the best way to, to get, you know, your 60 day, you know, outstandings to, to pay up. Um, but unfortunately, or I mean, maybe it's just, you know, not unfortunately, that's just the fact of, of being in business is, that's what you got to deal with, man. That's what mm. you got to deal with. It's interesting hearing uh, the people on Twitter, w- the excitement they have when they find solutions mm. um, to problems. Um, great community on Twitter. I'm just really thankful for them. W- w- that's how we found Marco, Mike Whalen, Aaron, Jess. Everybody knows who they are out there. Just sharing um, you know, their insights on running a practice better. Because when you find that electro- electronic payment system that works, you go and tell people, you know, head note works for lawyers. Mm. Sarah yeah, Schaff yeah. has this, but it's nothing if you don't have that mentality in front, discuss money up front, um, rehab the rates, think about a different way to charge. Maybe you're undercharging. Um, yeah. could be, could be. Um, but to that point of charity, it feels good to run a charity. <laughs> it's tr- and I isn't hope, that I mean, so sad that's yeah, the thing that's so sad though because you say well we'll just keep paying and it'll come back out eventually it'll come back I'm here to help people i'm, I'm here, here to help, help it'll come back and <laughs> i've you know i think we've probably been on the receiving end of some of those investments from a lawyer who's like no it's cool and then in six months they turn into not cool they're like where's the leads you know, you promised yeah. us this stuff, but they invested in this, you know, beneficent kind of vision, but they weren't really thinking. It was a very charitable, optimistic vision, not grounded by goals, not grounded by processes, systems. It's another thing that you'll hear Mike Whalen wailing on about. Yeah. Systems. You got to get your systems together. That's what Marco talks about. Mm-hmm. He has 
the, the he teaches the CLE about getting paid. He teaches it all over the country. He's been helping lawyers try and get that money because he understands that it's not only about collecting and then making overhead and then making sure that the AC is on. It's about burnout. It's about your family. It's about your life. It's about, you know, the profession continuing to be a place where people feel that they can, you know, strive and achieve and be good humans. You know, oh, yeah. it's connected. And it'll compound. Yeah, it'll Absolutely. compound. Yeah. That's a really, really good point is that you will, if you don't pay attention to this stuff, uh, you will find yourself some night saying, why? Why am I doing this? I'm yeah. bur- I'm I'm working sixty hours a week, and look yeah. what's in my bank account. Yeah, um, and, and indignance, and indignance is right after that. Then comes yeah. contempt, and then yeah. who knows what trickles down to your staff or to client issues. But you know, yeah. Well, I was just gonna say, and this the one thing I noticed about this too. It, re- it reminds me of uh, you know, like being, you know, I'm talking to one of my kids about being late with a homework assignment. Like mm. the longer you let it go the more difficult it becomes to, to reapproach and, and make it happen and get it done. It just, it starts to build the, 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 you know, you don't want to do it. I didn't do it. It's still hanging here. It's built, you know, mm-hmm. nobody wants to sit down and say, look at all these people who didn't pay me. And I mean, hopefully you're not facing <laughs> that situation, but if you let be. it go 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, um, just that time makes it more so difficult more to collect on. I mean, everybody who does any kind of collections will tell you once it gets to a certain point, you just got to write it off. I mean, mm-hmm. nobody's going to even take it seriously. So, you know, what you said about systems, um, what Marco says about systems at that, to me, that is like one of the most important aspects of this is don't let it get to that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's more gems like that. Ways that you can change your mindset around money, uh, that, you know, that's Wendy Witt's thing. Um, you know, it's, it's about mindset and it's about processes and systems, but it's about Marco and it's about money and it's about lawyers and it's about getting paid and it's about loss. Awesome, and it's about to go down right now. After these messages, we'll be right back. Any lawyer looking to grow their business online can generate more leads from their website by hiring ConsultWebs. After working with lawyers exclusively since 1999, we've tested thousands of web designs and marketing strategies, so we know what flips and what flops. For more information, visit www.consultwebs.com today. And now, for a lawsome interview. Marco Brown is the managing partner at Brown Law, a family law firm in Utah. He got his JD from the University of Nebraska School of Law, has been lauded and recognized as Utah's Outstanding Family Lawyer of the Year, sits on all of the bars, and is distinguished beyond distinction. After all this high-flying success, we are lucky enough Marco has decided to land his plane on the Lawson Airfields today. Marco, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. You've created this CLE presentation for lawyers entitled... Getting paid your number one job. You said you've given it several times. You give it whenever you can. Why is this so important? And can you synthesize uh, that, that, that presentation for us here? Yeah, I'll do the synthesis after. So the reason it's so important is because I just see so much suffering among lawyers. And a lot of it, I think, is completely needless. I mean, I went through the same thing. 2010, I started a law firm. Uh, I, before that, I worked in insurance defense, which if anybody's ever worked in insurance defense, they know it's literally the worst job that you'll ever have as an attorney. So I did that. I I only made it about 18 months. I hated every second of it. Opened a law firm in a new state, no network, no clients, no nothing, and just made it work. But I made tons and tons and tons of mistakes in the beginning. And a large part of that was I just didn't get paid like I should have been paid. So I created a lot of problems for myself. And then that after about five years, started creating uh, all sorts of other problems in my life, uh, you know, relationship problems, physical problems, spiritual problems, all of that. Mm. And I had to make a decision what I was going to do and which way I was going to go. And 
how I was going to fix this train because if I didn't fix it, I was going to die by the time I was about 60 of a heart attack. I just kind of knew that. Wow. So I decided, Hey, look, you know what, what do I want to do? Uh, what's the first thing I want to change? And I thought, well, I'm already doing all this work. Why don't I just get paid for it? And it, and it changed kind of everything after that. So I, I see, you know, the mistakes I made and then how I was able to change it. And I see a lot of those same mistakes in, in attorneys every day and it's just needless suffering. And that's why I talk about this as much as I can. Awesome. And so, and so what, what, what is, so do you have to unpack that for them? What, what's the, what's the presentation? Like, do they all say like, hallelujah, this it's preaching to the choir. Like what's, what's synthesized the, the presentation quickly. Sure. Sure. You know, what's funny about it is I get to the end of it and everyone kind of says, oh yeah, I kind of figured, I kind of figured that. And I think, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. I'm not that smart a guy and everybody kind of says that, but then no one does it. Right. So it, right. it's just putting together what we already, what we already know. So quickly kind of what it is, there are eight rules for getting paid. The first is you have to change your mind about money because we're taught all of these stupid, stupid things as attorneys about money by our law professors and by our bar associations. And then, so you have to really get your mind right. Then you have to you have to do the system stuff. So you have to bill regularly. You have to have money and trust all the time. Uh, you you shouldn't you can't chase money, which is mm. not so much systematic as, as kind of a mind thing. Like mm. if you find yourself taking cases you don't normally take, or discounting your retainer or your hourly rate, those sorts of things, or doing favors for people in your church or in your community, like you're just chasing cash. You can justify it to yourself however you want, but you're just chasing cash. So there, there are those things. Um, and then there's the tough stuff, like when people who should have money in trust, you should always have more, you know, two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 in trust, right? Don't ever get into the negative. You should always have money in trust. You should always be in the positive. And that's the simple part. The hard part is when people don't pay you or don't have money in trust, you need to stop working. Like absolutely just stop, cut them off and tell them to pay you. And that's that's where it gets like the rubber meets the road, man. That is tough. You have to have systems in place to do that. You have to have somebody who's the head of the collection department do that. Mm. So you have to set up all of this stuff beforehand. Um, another one is uh, specialize. Lawyers just do too much. And we all think we're the brightest people in the room, right? And and we're not. So specialize as much as you possibly can. You'll make more money and you'll do less work doing it. Uh, my favorite one personally is fire your worst client and fire that person today. And and this is the one where I give this presentation. Everyone kind of laughs at this and I say, no, like this is where you make the decision right now how you're going to live your life as an attorney. If you can go home and fire your worst client today, your life is going to be exponentially better and your team's life is going to be exponentially better. And then the last one is kind of, a, again, a mindset thing. So I begin with mindset and I end with mindset and, and it's really make you, your family, your team, your number one priority and your clients are second. So getting paid, taking vacations with your family, doing all of those things that are truly important to you and your team, those things are first and your clients are second. Because if you put your clients first, you're going to burn out and you're going to be a terrible attorney. And if you put yourself and your family first, then that's the right priority and you're going to be around a long time and you're going to be able to be an excellent attorney. So really, though, I got to ask, I mean, how is getting paid a problem for what seems to be a, a pretty well-paid career? I mean, you know, tech exists and it's not just like fancy client portals, but like, you know, spreadsheets, accountability, uh, you know, QuickBooks. I mean, what, you know, what happened here? How are people not getting paid? They just don't think about it. The, the vast majority of time, uh, lawyers don't think about it. So 56% of American attorneys are solos. And that includes true solos where they have nobody or there are two attorneys in an office and they kind of office share, but they do different things. So that that accounts for about 56 percent of American attorneys and those attorneys. Th this is the this is the life day in the life of an average American attorney. They will work eight hours a day. You know that you're not really trying that hard if you're only working eight hours a day, but that's beside the point. So you're working eight hours a day. You are billing. 2.5 hours a day, and you are collecting in 2018, and this is a 2019 study, 1.7 hours a day. 21% of the hours you work, you are collecting on.
But I mean, so are you saying like people just don't ask? I mean, because honestly, like, you know, as a as a non lawyer, uh, I'd be it would be the furthest thing from my mind to just stiff like a law firm. Like that's terrifying. You know what I mean? Like, is it just a matter of like not sending out invoices or I mean, what what's going on? Yeah, that's part of it. And that's one mm. of my rules is to bill regularly. So you have to send out your invoices, the average. And here are some other statistics. The average time it takes a lawyer to get paid is about 170 days. So you have 87 days from the time they do the work until the invoice, right? Just send out a bill. And then 83 days from the time they send out the bill until they get paid. A hundred. That's almost six months to get paid. So a lot of this problem is the lawyer is just not doing what they what they should do. It's all, it's always the lawyer, right? Like if if you run a law firm, everything is your fault, and you just have to own it. It's, <laughs> Damn it. it! It's just it's just how it is. Like it's leadership, right? Everything's your fault. You're not a politician. You don't you don't get to put it off on somebody else. It's your own freaking fault. So what's your excuse? It just takes an extraordinarily long time for lawyers to get paid, and that's one of the problems because I think all the there's a lot of other data on invoicing. And once you get it past about 45 or 60 days, your chance of getting paid on an invoice goes down dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that that's a very, very significant problem. But the other problem is people do stiff their lawyers all the time, literally all the time. It's horrible. Really? It's horrible. Yeah. We had Sarah Schaff, who, who has Headnote, um, which is a you know, software made in Silicon Valley. She was working with Google. She's a lawyer. You know, she created this stuff. And she was like, lawyers are the worst at getting paid. I think that there's this, what I call, handshake business of law. That's always kind of existed. Like we have never as an industry up until really the last couple of years, maybe like assigned net terms to our invoices, like a really basic business practice in any other area or any other service industry. We just don't really do that. Where it's just sort of a wink and a, I trust you'll handle this and, uh, I trust you're handling this and, and, and no one actually follows up on all that shaking of the hands, you know, is that... Yeah. That, that's a that's a bad model right there, that handshake thing. No, the, the model that lawyers nowadays need to abide by is the get paid like a casino boss model. Mm. And here's the logic. You can go to Vegas and you can get literally anything you want in Vegas, right? You go to the casino boss, you pay that person money and they will do anything for, for you. The moment that money runs out, you get jack. <laughs> There's nothing happening, man. <laughs> You're not even getting back into your hotel room to get your stuff. Like you got to pony, you got to pony up to get totally. anything you want. So that that's, I mean, I'm being facetious here, but that really is the model we have to we have to abide by. We have to be totally excellent attorneys, amazing at what we do. Because if we aren't that, then we're not living up to our side of our contract, and we just we're terrible attorneys, and we should go to lawyer prison. But once once we've done that, once we've done excellent stuff, people need to pay us. And if they aren't paying us, they're stealing from us. And that's yeah. not OK. Well, and, and in some way, you're stealing from yourself. And that's where the burnout kind of starts playing. Uh, you know, a, according to, you know, bar surveys that we've seen, lawyers, per personal and professional concerns center around burnout and then just too many lawyers. There's too many lawyers. There's too much competition. And so how do you think... There's a two-part question. One, how do you think compensation and recognition, like that financial recognition for your work, how does that circumvent burnout? I mean, it, it's it, money isn't everything, but how does that help alleviate the burnout? And then two, the competitive side, uh, are, how do law firms that have made it, like these big law firms that have made it, how do they handle this? Do they have systems or or what what's 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 what are they doing that, you know, that we could probably emulate? Sure. So I'm going to answer the first and yeah. I'll probably need you to remind me the second. So good on the compensation and recognition side. Right. I, I break the, I break this down. So when it comes to compensation uh, and burnout, it really depends. So if you are an attorney who works for the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty, let's say that. Uh, cause I love, I love those guys. Mm. So if you work for them and you make, what do they pay their people? Like 70,000, 80,000 a year, some, mm. you know, not, not absolutely terrible, but not good. So 
you're going to be completely and totally satisfied with your job because you're doing what you love. You're doing religious liberty cases. And those are the coolest things on the earth. If I could make a million dollars a year doing that stuff, I absolutely would. But I can't. And I love money too much. So I, I don't do it. But those people, those people are totally into it. So mm -hmm. the compensation is secondary to them. They're right. totally fine with it. So that doesn't uh, the burnout thing, you know, if you're into it, then that's great. What right. Where the burnout comes is when you're a solo attorney and you're just grinding it every day and your people are stiffing you for a, a dollar for every two dollars that they should be paying you. That's when you burn out. It, yeah. It's again, that's your fault and you need to change it because your life is going to change once you get paid 100 percent. But that's where the burnout happens is that and, disconnect. And then thinking that the solo is looking at the law firms that have made it and they hate advertising lawyers. They hate lawyer, big law firms. You know, they, they just have this kind of like, ugh, you know, and then they think that those lawyers are the ones to blame. How yeah, does that, not. like, yeah. how, how does that play in? It's like, it, it, I, I see where this is. It's like the, the law firm that has means can take care of the client issues, but the majority of lawyers serving people don't have access to the means or they're sort of, you know, stealing from themselves. And so I guess I'm just sort of want to unpack the animosity because someone could look at you and be like, yeah, Marco Brown, of course he could say this because he's got this great firm. Who do, like, maybe just, yeah, what, what would you say to this person? Like, you know, what, what's the law firm that's made it? How do they handle this stuff? Yeah, so let's talk about the animosity between lawyers first. This is actually one of the uh, one of the things I've noticed when you get on Twitter and all bad things happen on Twitter. Yes, it's so, a horrible place. Oh my goodness! So yes, I, there I, often we are there often. <laughs> that's where I found you guys actually. So it's great. I mean, it really works. You're not saying awful things, but anyway. One of the things I've noticed on Twitter is this kind of self-loathing that attorneys have for themselves as attorneys and then for mm. other attorneys as well. Mm -hmm. So they'll talk about how lawyering is systematically broken or these guys are jerks or whatever. And, and you know, that that's an external locus of control sort of deal. You, you have to look internally. Mm. So if you're looking for and this goes back to your question, this, this is the recognition part. If you're looking for external recognition to make your life better you know, especially from an attorney, that your life is going to be terrible. I mean, what, what's our recognition as attorneys besides what we get paid? It's making partner at a firm. So let's imagine this. You have a whole bunch of people who call themselves partners that exclude others and then at, at some point let those people into the club. Right. And that's your big recognition in your life. Wow. You know, that that's not that's not going to lead to anything good. You You need to get something, some sort of validation from inside yourself and, and what you do for people and, and maybe how much you get paid because that is an indicator of how well you're serving people. But if you're looking for external recognition from attorneys, you are going to burn out and your life is going to be terrible. And then the animosity part toward the other attorneys, right? Uh, just, just get over yourself, right? Like the, those people who built a big firm, they built a big firm because they worked really hard. There's really no way around that. And you don't, you don't get to have an excellent firm without nights and mornings where you wake up and you, you're crying because you just don't know where your next meal is going to come from. I guarantee every one of those people went through that type of thing. I know I did. Mm -hmm. uh, so if somebody you know, says, oh, hey, look at this. You know, of course, he can say these things. He's he's at this spot. Well, that's because you didn't you didn't see me when I was crying like a like a 12 year old. Mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't know where my next mortgage payment was going to come from. It's fun, uh, t talking about Jim Adler, the Texas hammer. <laughs> um, just just a, a, a sign of great marketing, but also a sign flashpoint of a lot of that animosity. Be like these lawyers are dragging down the profession. I read a really interesting interview with him, and he talks about back in the 70s when he was starting his firm and how he had to take out loans um, to get, you know, food on the table and and how he was really concerned about making it. And that's where his, his, his that his his, you know, that's where his sort of animus comes from uh, is this I, I can't go back there. So one piece of advice for the JD on the street about getting paid. What's the one piece of advice if someone sat down next to you in an airport, they're looking harried, troubled, distressed. Marco, I, I can't get this straight. What, what would you tell them? 
I would tell them you have to decide, make a decision right now that you're worth 100% of the work you do. Because because that's what it comes down to. If you don't get paid 100%, you're telling yourself and you're telling everybody else that you are not worth it. And that's not a healthy place to be. So decide, decide you're not going to take that anymore. Decide you're going to get paid 100%. Decide you're not going to think the way your law professor, bureaucrat, people, and your bar association people want you to think about money. Decide that you're going to pay your team what they're worth. Decide that you're going to pay your family what it's worth and give them that time and, and allow yourself the ability to grow as an attorney because you have money and, and you can invest in yourself. I love it, man. So people want to learn more, Mar Marco. They want to find out, uh, is, is this CLE available? Or could you turn this into an online uh, course? And could you be like on a stage with a microphone, like yelling at everybody and getting people hype? And then we release a bunch of doves at the end. Um, I, I'm sure I could do that. That's probably a little out of my wheelhouse. Maybe in a few years, I'll do that sort of thing. But... <laughs> I put it on, uh, I'm, I'm doing them right now. So I'm putting them on YouTube, each one of the rules. Oh, and excellent. Then I'm, actually, yeah, I'm actually giving this CLE at Max LawCon in St. Louis in June. And I know that's going to be taped. Um, so there's, you know, there's some ways about it, but I probably need to professionalize a little bit and just kind of put it out there. Well, so if they want to find more about you, where, where, where can they go? They got YouTube and, and if they want to hit you up, uh, where, where can they find you on the internet, Marco? Uh, so I'm on YouTube. It's I, I think you just search Brown Law Utah. It'll come up. Uh, I'll come up on that Google search as well. I always give people my email if they want to talk because I'm not I'm not selling stuff. I just want to help attorneys out. So my email is Marco at utdivorceattorney.com. Uh, you can call my office if you want. It's 801-685-9999. Of course, you won't reach me because I actually don't have a, a phone in my office. I got rid of that about four years ago. <laughs> but because I. That, that's a, that's another great story for another day, I guess. Five questions we ask everyone. What was the last book you read? The Closer Survival Guide by Grant Cardone. Ooh. Sweet. Number two, what is your favorite place? Venice, Italy. Number three, what sites, blogs, newsletters, or podcasts do you regularly check in with? Oh, this is good. Uh, so I listen to the Dave Ramsey show. I listen to Grant Cardone all the time. Anything I can find on YouTube from Grant Cardone. I listen to Tim Ferriss for podcasts. Uh, but the last couple of years, I've just read books. I've read about 100 books a year. So that, that's where I get most of my information. Hell yeah. Damn. All right. Uh, number four. If you were stranded on a desert island and could only pick one condiment to take with you, what would it be? Balsamic vinegar. Hmm, like the, not the real stuff, not the stuff you buy in the supermarket, but the stuff that they make in Modena, Italy, that's like 100 years old. It's the best thing you'll ever you'll ever taste. It's got like the wax dipped cork or whatever, like limited release yeah. kind of. Oh, oh, man. All, all that stuff, man. Yep, it's amazing. <laughs> Righteous. OK, last one. After a long day or a long week at work, how do you relax and unwind? I cook Italian food. For show notes, links, and info, go to thelawsonpodcast.com or follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Be sure to leave us a review and rating in iTunes or wherever you find the you listen to. Until next week, stay lawson. Awesome.